Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Welcome to another episode of Referrals Podcast. I have to tell you, I'm so excited about today's guest and today's topic. And I have this this whole thought, and I have to tell you, first of all, today's broadcast is brought to you by AmeriFirst, Ameritrust, and Amera Uno Mortgage, uh, one of the largest companies in the in the country, people that we have a lot of trust with, and we even have a loan with them. So it's one of those where they are not only the brought to you by sponsor for today, but they are. Hear, hear the voice squeak? That was me coaching football Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I have to just warn you right from the get-go that I may squeak throughout today's episode, and I am not going through puberty again, I promise you. Well, maybe. But here's the thing, is I just want to let you know that we are huge fans of Ameritrust Mortgage. They are are brought to you by sponsor, and they are sponsoring Referral Mastery Summit in Orlando, Florida. Check it out at rms22.com. If you have a database, if you have a CRM, if you have a community you want to grow and love on, then guess what? You've got to be at RMS22, RMS22, rms22.com. Check it out. And here's the thing about today's topic and today's guest is we are evolving and we have actually, the evolution has already occurred. And some people call it a revolution as much as an evolution. We have gone from the ego era in business where everybody was talking about being the biggest, the baddest, being number one that, being number one that. And and then all of a sudden, everybody was number one. So how do you stand out when everybody's number one? And the fact of the matter is the consumer stopped trusting the number one claims and even the awards because they found out that awards can be bought. Oh my gosh, you mean I can buy an award? Yes, you can buy awards all over the place. In fact, you can buy one for me if you'd like. What award would you like? I'll get it shipped out to you plus 10%. But here's the thing is we have evolved from the ego era where the motto was we're number one or I'm number one to the generosity generation, the generosity generation. And you're welcome to join the generosity generation right now at joingengen.com. But the evolution has happened where we are now, where the ABC is now always be connecting instead of always be closing. The motto now is I am here to help. We're here to help. It's already happened. You're seeing it in advertisements. You're seeing it in the communication of all these companies. It's already happened. And the reason it happened isn't because Michael Mayer wrote about it 12 years ago. It was because the consumer has changed. The environment has changed. They are no longer responsive. They don't care who's number one because you know what? The consumer knows who's number one. And that's the consumer. It's no longer about companies being number one. The consumer is number one. So it's always be connecting. That's the new ABC, the old ABC, always be closing. Listen, that's the way of the dinosaur. You can't close people anymore. You you close on them, they'll close the door behind them on their way out. And that's the truth. So always be connecting is really the motto of today's episode and today's show, which leads me to this wonderful person that I get the chance to interview today. So it opens with a quote, I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. From his penchant for wearing Hawaiian shirts and chaining hats every five minutes to the stories he tells, Bryce is definitely not someone you will soon forget. Proud husband and father of four grown children, Bryce enjoys painting and traveling with his wife, Carla. He is founder of the Movers and Shakers Collective, owns a full-service travel agency, a tour company, and is the publishing director for both Orlando Real Producers and the brand new Space Coast Real Producers. Without any further ado, welcome to Referrals Podcast, 
Bryce Morrison. Welcome. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today? I'm telling you, I'm doing great. I got a chance to reconnect with you. And, you know, what was great about our first meeting is we actually met because of Always Be Connecting. I got the opportunity to speak in Orlando and Tommy Sandvik, Tommy with an H, was setting up a, a basically like a mastermind and a tour. And you did the tour and then he and I did the mastermind. And it was, it was fantastic. It went without a hitch. It was great people. The questions were off the charts. It was so intimate and so well done. And uh, I mean, isn't it interesting is that's my first impression of you. And it couldn't have been a better first impression because everybody was talking about how great you were. Tommy was talking about how great you were. Tommy was talking about how great I was. I was talking about how great Tommy is. And the people were all talking about how great each other was. And that's the power of an event or getting people together, you know, versus, you know, maybe the mass marketing that we see today. So I have to like start with that is, you know, today's topic is really the new ABC, which is always be connecting. Like, what does that mean to you? Well, it basically what you just said is exactly the way I approach everything. It's all about edification. So when I'm connecting people, I'm focused on, okay, who do I know that's going to benefit this other person? And then I work hard to edify both parties to each other. So in your case, it's easy. You got to meet Michael J. Mayer. He's publisher of seven levels of communication. He's an amazing connector. He does great things with referrals. Same thing with Tommy. You know, he's, he's vice president of coaching with Referco amazing guy so especially when i'm in a room with two different people as soon as i have connected with somebody immediately in my mind i'm going through going okay who does this person need to meet who's going to benefit on both sides i have to tell you i i love that you're i mean always be connecting you're always looking to connect people and what's great about that is you're always looking to connect like successful people great people. Yes. And the other thing that I love about what you said is, is own the intro, like own the intro. You do a three-way intro. And when you do the three-way intro, what's amazing about that is you're championing, let's say you introduced me and Tommy, right? And it's like you, you edify me, which is you being a champion, right? You're championing Absolutely. me and then you're championing Tommy. Well, here's, here's what we don't think but subconsciously registers in our head. I want to champion Bryce because I know that if I champion you, you're you're likely to to champion me to somebody else. Even if I don't even know you, I'm thinking Bingo. I got to get to know Bryce because he edifies other, he champions others, and you know it goes all the way back to the saying from Seven L: It's easy to champion a champion, right? So be a champion if you want people to champion you. Be a champion. I mean, Absolutely. I. I I absolutely love that. And all right. So when we were at this networking event, great turnout, great people. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it, it was just, and it was, what a cool venue with a fountain, you know, and, and yeah. the room. And I remember my son had two broken arms and there was actually a sign that basically said, it's not what happens to you. It's your response to what happens to you. And he had such a great response to having two broken arms. It was just like, oh my gosh, like it, it there were so many perfect elements to it that, that, uh, you know, what's funny is like, you're not responsible for that, but you're responsible for that. Like you, you know, it's, it, it's amazing how that works is when you do a good thing, all these other really cool, good things happen that you're like, you didn't even know about, but it ends up that way because of the atmosphere. But all right, so what I saw from you is a master at working the room. If you if you want it right, I put working the room in quotes. But like to you, what does working the room actually mean? A, a lot of what I just said. It's it's all about finding who I can edify and who I can connect. Uh, working the room in a digital age is vastly different than it was. I, so I celebrate my 50th birthday on September 8th. Happy birthday. So I've been around for a little while. I've been, yeah. I've been around yeah. the block and I've been so. in sales and networking and entrepreneurship for many, many years. Working the room 20 plus years ago was just 
floating around, hopping from networking event to networking event, and hoping that you could hand a business card to somebody that Mm -hmm. would want your business. Today, you cannot do that. It just is not going to work. You have to follow Michael J. Mayer's seven levels of communication. You have to connect with people ahead of time. You have to get them to introduce you to the right people. And you have to make those introductions and edify. Otherwise, people are going to forget you the moment that you walk away. It's not about throwing a business card. Mm -hmm. It's about connecting. Yeah, I love that. And so, all right, so let's talk about the digital age, right? What about Zoom? Does it play a role in working the room? And if so, how? And why is it different in the digital age to network versus maybe how it was 10 to 15 years ago? So Zoom networking meetings have largely fallen off. They they didn't, they weren't very effective. So you really do have to get back into the physical room to network. However, Zoom still plays a vital role in networking. Just like right now we're on Zoom, it is all about furthering that connection. So mm-hmm. you can go farther faster if you make yourself available to having Zoom connections with people after you've met them in person. Yeah. You can do one-to-ones back to back to back and just take that information and run with it. Oh, you know what? I've got somebody you need to meet. Let me connect you at the next event that we go to. I mean, one of the things that you can even do is like we're meeting right now is you can actually invite another person to the Zoom Absolutely. that you're doing right now. And uh, I've done that before where like I just let the other person, hey, heads up, I may include you in a Zoom. I'm meeting this really cool person that I think would be a great connection for you. And they're kind of ready for the invite, right? And then, you know, of course, you want to get permission from the person that you're in the, the actual sure. Zoom with. But the only problem with that that I've seen is that people will share with you in a one-to-one what they would never say or share with even one other box in that Zoom. Like I I recently had somebody share with me that they're getting a divorce and it's like, like there's no way they would have told me that if there was somebody else in the room, right? Of but course. I mean, that that's the power of, and, and Zoom is kind of the, the one-to-one for the, for the digital age and it has some similar effects, right? Definitely. So uh, what do you do when you do a Zoom? Like what, what's your, what's your focus? What's your outlook? What, you know, what's your, uh, stance? What's your, uh, I I guess your attitude going in. I really want to get to know the personality of the person. You know, you, you have your question. I come from a background of, um, I was, are you talking about the question? How do I make this the biggest win for you? (laughs) Oh, well, no, not that question. Uh, um, as far as the, uh, relationship, how would your spouse, um, there you go. Identify you. Yeah, so I'll do the magic me, question here in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I'm a little, I, I circumvent that. I, I'm a little more uh, subtle in that. Uh, I was a substance abuse counselor in the Navy. So I, I bring a lot of that with me. And I get to know someone through questions that help me identify that. I also, I was just talking to Tommy about this, as a matter of fact. I really embraced the five love languages. Mm -hmm. And for me, I recognize that as one of the best business books out there. I know it was originally written for couples and relationships in that manner, but I work very hard to make sure that I'm embracing the five love languages with anybody I connect with. And, um, and I need to identify that as soon as possible in the relationship. So in my first Zoom or one-to-one, personal one-to-one with them, I'm looking for clues that help me identify who they are so that I can reward them and fill their love tank and help them want to be around me. Yeah, like drop the mic on that one. You know, uh, applying the five love languages to to business and to interpersonal communication with other, I mean, you're right. It was written as a marriage or spousal type of a book, but it is everything. Everybody, it's kind of like, I mean, if, if you think about it, if you combine the magic question with the love languages question, you, you, I mean, you literally are prepared to win with that person for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Because you know how to communicate with them and you know what to communicate with them about. 
it right. doesn't it doesn't get any better than that right so so uh, can you update uh, so i'll do the magic question just real quick because there are some people that are brand new to the podcast we i mean we're getting twenty thousand downloads at this point every other week so it's it's one of those Beautiful. where we are welcoming a lot of brand new people and i would like to welcome them uh, to the show and it's like the magic question is sen- essentially this is hey listen i know this might sound like a weird question but it, it helps us get to know a little bit but each other better, you know, out of the following four options, just choose one. If you don't mind, choose which one out of the following four, your best friend, spouse, or significant other would best describe you. Would they best describe you as one straight to the point two, social and outgoing three steady and dependable, or are you four cautious and perfectly accurate? So Bryce, what would you answer that with? It is interesting to think about that with relation to me because I'm actually an introvert. Tommy and I have talked about this a few times. I'm an introvert who happens to have studied social situations for many, many, many years. And I come across as the second. For sure. I would, you know, you wear Hawaiian shirts, you wear different hats all the time. You're very social. Like, so you're an introverted I, right? An introverted too, maybe, right? Right, right. The truth is, I hide my directness very well. Mm-hmm. I I do, on occasion, let it come out, but um, like under stress. I, I work. I work hard. Yeah, I work hard to make sure that I'm social and outgoing as much as possible. Yeah. So, so your your second moon maybe like would be that one, right? That straight Absolutely. to the point, yep. and it might actually be your 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 first moon right. and in a less social setting, right? Because being blunt all the time is a turnoff. So it's like, we also kind of want people to kind of like us because in this business, it, it matters, you know? Absolutely. So which, which would you say is your lowest moon or, or choice out of the steady cautious. dependable or the four? Yeah. So cautious and perfectly accurate. Right? I, so, I'm a risk taker. Yeah. Yeah. Let's no, go. Throw caution to the wind. Let's let's go. Absolutely. Which is why you get a lot of things done. You're an entrepreneur. There aren't too many entrepreneurs that lead with their four. You know, they're just right. Uh, they're, they're not risk takers unless it's a super calculated calculated risk. And by then, it's not a risk. It's a certainty, right? Yeah. So so the, that's the power of the magic question. Let's like the love languages. Like you know, tell me kind of like how do you ask that and like where do you go from there? Because this, I mean. And this isn't on the script, people. He's doing no. this from memory, but but I I just I'm so genuinely curious about how you're using it because it's it's such an ingrained part of of things we do too. So the very first thing that I do is I watch them as in person, especially. So either if I've met them in a networking event, or if the first time I ever sit down with them is at a restaurant, what have you, I'm looking for visual clues as to whether or not they are physical touch. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the love languages is physical touch if they are and Tommy and I were just talking about this too if they are then I'm going to make sure that I reward them with extra physical touch and and that can come off a little wrong but what that means is for example if I shake your hand I may also reach over and touch your elbow at the same time or I may put my hand on your shoulder or bro hug, that right? Take it to you, you know, hug, or exactly. bro hug, right? If, Just a if, little bit more. if it's that far along or, you know, what have you. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to reward them and help them feel more comfortable with me on a physical basis. Um, if it's gift giving, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to help them feel like I have one of the best ways is the written note. You know, it is such an easy way to make them feel like I've given them a gift. For me, my primary love language is actually gift giving. So I love finding those people that are um, that like gifts because there's two sides to the gift giving. There's the giving and then there's the receiving or having someone receive your gift. For me, my most rewarding effort is when somebody well receives my gift. So I love it when I know somebody can well receive my gift. I do. I go out of my way to figure out what I can find that rewards them and helps them feel good about me. 
that's the beauty of it, right? Is is the cool thing about giving a gift is you both love it. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's that's that it, that's what's so cool about giving, right? Is is we love to give and we love the recipients and the recipient loves to get in many, many cases. Appreciative right? receivers. Yeah, right. absolutely. Hopefully, right? And yes. and uh, so I, <clears throat> I love that. And so you've got, I mean, so for those of you that are maybe newer to uh, what we're talking about, the five, the five love languages are, are essentially quality time, words of affirmation, gift giving or gift receiving. You've got uh, physical touch and then acts of service. That's what people best like to receive. And they love that. Like, and, and for some people you might, you're giving them gifts and they don't respond. Like my wife is not gift giving. Right. So, so it was so funny. I'd give her flowers or I'd give her, you know, jewelry or whatever it was. And she would be like, Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. You know, it's just like, uh, but she is really words of affirmation and acts of service. When I do something for her, it means a lot more. She, she probably thought a lot more about me actually going to a jewelry store and getting it than, and the thought behind it, than the actual gift. Right. And it's one of those where, you know, having learned that over time, you just, you just, you, the relationship grows, you know? And uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Mine's physical touch is number one. Um, yeah. Which is, which is kind of interesting. Um, and my, my uh, my second is actually gifts, and that is weird, because I used to not be a great appreciative receiver. I'm a much better appreciative oh, yeah? receiver now, um, but uh, it is pretty cool uh, for me to get gifts. Which so and what's interesting is my two are totally different than my wife's two. Is it that course. opposites yeah. attract yeah. is so true? Yep. Our, our behavioral styles. I'm a D I C. Some people would finish that with a K, but I won't. But I'm a D-I-C with a low S. She is S off the charts, which is the three wow. in my magic yeah. question, with some C to fill my C gap, and then not very much I or D. And, you know, like literally, if you put ours on top of each other, it's 100% D-I-S-C. So, uh, and then the same thing with the love languages. And that's the beauty of these conversations. Around People are different. We're all different. Absolutely. So love that. Love that. I mean, man, I did not know we were going to the five love languages with this, but I'm so <laughs> I'm so glad we did. And that's a book recommendation for for those of you that yeah. uh, are newer to the podcast. Make sure you check that out. The five love languages. They actually have the five love languages at work now. I've read it. It doesn't yep. go as deep as even what we're talking about, but it's uh, it's a great read. I'd read the first. I will one tell first. you. The, the words of affirmation is very, very high for me as well. And that's actually one of the reasons why connecting is so easy for me, because I am always searching for those words of affirmation. So the moment that I'm able to connect to people and see the, the benefit of those two being together, that rewards me and fills my love tank on the words of affirmation. Yeah, so it, you know, it, Knowing yourself can help very much, though, with you doing your networking as well. Even if you never apply it to anybody else, just knowing yourself will help you. Yeah, it, it's similar to the the disc, right? Is knowing Absolutely. yourself is knowing how you're coming across. Knowing your love language is also going to kind of explain like what you appreciate and what you don't, and maybe we need to appreciate it all. Even though we don't maybe appreciate some of this other stuff as much, we can still learn to be an appreciative receiver with the other things, right? So, Bingo. Yeah, love that. Um, all right. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You have become influential, right? And it's one of those where like today, we are interviewing you on Referrals Podcast, and it's really kind of a connection of a connection of a connection, right? You were connected to Tommy, Tommy connected you to us, and, and here we are, thank God. And you are now the publishing director for two major magazines in the real estate world and huge in Florida. Uh, so how, how'd you get there? How did you get <laughs> connected to the point of, you know, basically what I would, you know, one of the top media organizations in the state of Florida? Working the room. So 
I first saw that someone else was checking in on the links on the golf course in the middle of the day with big names. I saw that same person out on the boat in the middle of the day with some of the biggest names in Central Florida, and I couldn't figure out how they were doing it. So I got the connection to that connection, sat down with him and said, what are you doing? And he introduced me to Aaron Luden with Orlando Real Producers. And immediately I paid for a 48-month advertisement within the magazine for my travel agency. I began going to his events, and I kind of slow played it. And within a year, I was on the links, and I was out on the boat, and I was having craft cocktails with some of the biggest names in Central Florida. And it was just about working the room. Part of it is getting photographed with people that are influential, making that public on social media as often as possible, knowing the photographers at these events. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can drop a name right now, Brian Price. I know that if Brian Price is in the room, he will help me to make sure that there is a photograph of me with some of the most influential people in the room. That's a nugget. And it it doesn't matter whether or not I spent two seconds with that person or I just happened to be standing next to them when the photograph was taken. Mm -hmm. By having that online, people see me as being with those influential people and that by relationship, makes me a little more influential or at least they see me that way yeah and that's just how it happened i love that and i probably said i love that 10 times during this it's almost (laughs) becoming like a a like or an um or a you know it's almost becoming a uh like a substitute word for that was brilliant but it it's one of those where aaron luden's name came up and that's interesting because i remember Oh my gosh, I've probably known Aaron for 10 or 12 years, maybe even longer than that. And I remember talking to him in the very beginning when Remington Ramsey out of Indianapolis and him were talking about this Real Producers magazine. And like, I was like, a physical magazine? Like, aren't, <laughs> aren't they like being Prince's phased dead, out right? and things like that? <laughs> and, and so we... Uh, we had this mastermind and I just remember this conversation it was fantastic. And, uh, I was, so we started kind of bannering back and forth and I was going, you know what, this could work if you, if you do it within the element of kind of some of the seven L stuff, if you're open to it. And I just, I just, I'm telling you, I made small suggestions. You got to do a launch event. You got to do events around it. You, you know, you're going to need to to kind of execute this invitation, confirmation, event, follow-up stuff, right? And and Remington and Aaron took it. I mean, you got to realize that was like a two-hour conversation. They took it. I wish my coaching clients would take action as well as Remington and Aaron have. <laughs> and honestly, the entire, you know, Real Producers Magazine, you know, media program. And... You know, I love the pictures that Aaron took my one one to one structure to another level with exactly what you just said with photos that he would have the launch event and then he would have these one to ones with the real producers afterwards. And then he would take a selfie or a photo. I remember he had a broken right. foot one time and he was taking a picture, you know, with his broken foot. And it's like, dude, if that guy can get out with a broken foot and he's got to wheel himself around, then anybody can. And, uh, you know, Aaron is one of those great stories. He's a, he's definitely networked himself to influence and deservedly. So great mind. Um, so, um, so what is the movers and shakers collective? Like, how is that different from traditional networking events? And this is a reminder that there's, there's one tonight from six to 9 PM in Orlando, Florida. Uh, you can check that out, uh, more about it by going to Bryce time dot com b r y c e t i m e dot com set up a, a schedule an appointment with bryce he can give you all the details on that i encourage you no matter where you're from to schedule a one-to-one with bryce i encourage you i right, fill up his time with one-to-ones like learn and then you know who knows what that connection could turn out to be for you so what is movers and shakers first let me just say if if they want to skip the process of knowing me ahead of time since it is tonight they can go to moversmeet.com there you go to buy the ticket right away right. um moversmeet.com. moversmeet.com and movers is with an s right yep 
So moversmeat.com. Go check that out. Make that happen. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So um, movers and shakers started with a handful of the actually Orlando real producers crowd. <laughs> we were we ended up at a, a wine t- or no, a cocktail making class at the Citrus Club. And we each knew somebody else. And so there was one linchpin in there, Emily Armstrong, uh, a very strong real estate professional here in Central Florida. <laughs> and, you know, all of these big players were connected through her. And we ended up at another location and we started spitballing ideas. And the next thing we know, we had a, a calendar event to sit down and discuss networking at a higher level how do we get some networking events that ended up happening the same way we had just experienced without all the card throwers in the room Mm -hmm. and so we started discussing what that might look like and how we could avoid that problem and it started with a launch party with those influential people we took about a week to promote the event Mm -hmm. and we did no paid advertisement anything else it was just us inviting our spheres of influence that we knew would recognize that card throwers were unwelcome that's right and our launch party went went off without a hitch with about 40 plus people in the room and then it just kept growing from there that was october of last year and we've had as many as uh 80 plus in a room we sold out the robinson which is a, a new york style lounge here in central florida we sold it out um they capped us at 80 people because of bartenders, but we ended up with a little bit more than that because people were buying at the door. But um, anyway, the point is, it's a paid event. That was one of the things we decided right off the bat. We want people to have some skin in the game. We're not giving them any free lunch. We do get sponsors because we also give money away to charity. But the paid portion of it covers their a couple of drinks and some small bites at every event. But what that does is it keeps the freeloaders from coming in. Mm-hmm. We've really, I've only seen in, like I said, we've been going since October every month. In all of those re- uh, movers and shakers events, we've only seen two or three people that ever came in and thought that they could throw a business card. It's all about the actual connections. And I've seen people make some huge connections in those events. We've had uh, football play- ex-football players. We've had uh, athlete stars. We've had all kinds of, we had people fly down from Chicago to come to our event. So it's, it's done exceptionally well. I'm very proud of it. Uh, we're having fun. And I brought Tommy on as a, a commissioner and uh, put him on the board of directors with the help of the core group. And he has been instrumental. He actually follows that invite process. And that has kept a very strong engagement with our community. So, and we're building upon that every day. Love it. Love it. All right. So you've talked about throwing cards and uh, how that's like a networking mistake. What are two or three, and this is totally off script, but I know you know the answer, so we're going there. (laughs) So what are two or three mistakes that networkers make that they need to avoid in the future? Throwing business cards. Yeah. Throwing business cards away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you go in and you make a real connection with somebody, ideally, you're going to set up a, a pull out your calendar right then and there and set up a one to one. However, if that's not really, if it doesn't fit the scenario and they give you a business card and say, Hey, I'd love to connect with you. Let's, let's talk next week. Don't throw the business card away. Mm-hmm. Keep it. Make sure that you walk around the corner, take a photo of it, send it to yourself with a text saying, call on Friday, whatever the case may be, something that's going to make sure that that person is front of mind Mm. whenever you get to your calendar and are scheduling things. Um, Another mistake would be to not be prepared for the event. Mm. So I actually am writing a, a pamphlet, which, you know, again, if you do schedule some time with me, I'll tell you how you can get that pamphlet for free. But the pamphlet is going to be how to work a room in a digital age. And one of the things I talk about there, 
number one is read. And it's not just read seven levels of communication, which is absolutely foundational, but also read industry specific books and magazines and periodicals, things like that, because when you go into these events and you really connect with somebody, if you don't know what you're talking about, they're not going to connect with you. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you're pretty well read, whether it's audiobooks or physically reading, read. But the second thing, and this is absolutely vital, you got to prepare for that meeting mm -hmm. so or that event. So if you're going to come to a Movers and Shakers event, go to BriceTime.com and book a one-to-one -one with me because guess what? The moment you tell me who you want to meet or who you need to meet, I'm going to make sure you meet that person because I know just about everybody in the room. So if you're going to a chamber event, get with the chamber president, get with somebody that's throwing that event, make sure that you ask, and this is directly from seven levels of communication, make sure you get into that organization before you even get there. That way you're not walking in cold. Mm -hmm. It, the worst thing you could possibly do is walk into an event feeling like you don't know anybody in the room, and then you sit in a corner with your cup of coffee and go, okay, uh, you know what? I spent $5 on this cup of coffee. I'm going to walk. You know, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You got to keep working those rooms, and you got to be consistent, mm -hmm. especially when you find something like the Movers and Shakers Collective. You want to make sure that you're consistently going to those events. Yeah, I love all that. I mean, oh my God. I mean, the the whole thought of real connection, asking great questions and and then leading that up to set up a one to one right there. And, you know, that leads to referability. If if you I mean, set up the one to one and your communication before that one to one, during that one to one, and right after that one to one, you can be referable with an influential person in a week. You can. People say this referral business or this database business, fear business, people, you know, networking takes forever, takes a long time. I've gotten referrals in a week. Right? Why? Because I communicated right after meeting them with some text message, email, you know, leaving a message, things like that, handwritten note, and then confirming the one to one. The communication up to the one to one is critical. And then you have the one to one and and you know, hopefully you focus on them and learn a lot more about them it, 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 enough to the point where they get interested in you. The only way they're going to get interested in you is if you're interested in them and be interested in them first. And then the after, you know, what do you do afterwards? And it's your, your follow up, get yourself a couple of to do's at the one to one and follow up in two weeks. You can go from a zero in, on the relationship scale. You didn't even know each other to a nine or 10, which is referable. So it's one of those where I absolutely love what you said here and take a photo of the, the business card to remind yourself to follow up. Absolutely love that. And then uh, the be prepared, you know, the intentional networking, you know, what a concept. And that's people go, well, networking doesn't work. And it's well, it's all in the preparation and the intention. You know, if you go there and you, you, you pay five bucks for a cup of coffee and you sit on the wall, then you're right. It's not going to work. But if you do the seven steps to connecting with connectors, and one of those steps is connecting with the membership chair, leader, people like Bryce, and, and finding out more about the event, how to maximize the event, and who to meet, then guess what? You go in, you meet critical people and influential people, and Bryce wants to help you with that too because Bryce wants you to be a part of the movers and shakers, right? If you're a mover and shaker, or you'll become a more mover and shaker. So there's vested interest literally on both sides of that. So I, I think, I mean, you gave me like 10 nuggets just by me asking you that what are the mistakes with networking, you know? And then I think other than being prepared and being ready to set that one-to-one -one up, what what's another networking strategy that we need to be thinking about putting in place that's, that's helped you in your career? I think that for me, it's, going outside of my what I know. So, for example, you know, we talked about the fact that I don't have a history in real estate. I have zero background in real estate. And now I'm the publishing director for two of the largest magazines in real estate. It's you don't know 
where you're going to fit in best. You don't know who you're going to connect with best. So don't just, you know, industry specific events are fine. That's great. But you know what? You might go into a room with a completely different industry. Let's use medical as an example. You go into an event with a bunch of doctors, nurses, et cetera, and all of a sudden they want to know about you because there's nobody else in the room like you. Mm -hmm. So go outside your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to connect with people that might not at first glance make sense. You don't know how you can help them, and you never know what they can do to help you. Wow. This was always be connecting with Bryce Morrison. How, I, I mean, I literally, if, if people didn't go through here and get, I mean, I, this is so full page of notes, full page of notes, right? So two, two full pages of the notes and strategies and tips and hints. And uh, first of all, if, if you're in the Orlando area or Florida, for that matter, go to movermeet.com. There's a meeting tonight, 6 to 9 p.m. Movers meet. Movers meet. M-O-V-E-R-S. And I even emphasized earlier, like, the S is in there, yep. so I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Moversmeet.com. And uh, there may actually be a few surprises at that meeting. Who knows? Um, it's it's a, a fantastic opportunity for you. It's uh, It does great for charity. Lots of great people at that meeting. Make that happen. But before you do it, my huge suggestion is go to Bryce Time and Bryce is B-R-Y-C-E-T-I-M-E.com and schedule a one-to-one -one with Bryce and, and learn how the masters network. And I will tell you, this is, this is such a critical thing because number one, networking has probably never been as powerful as it is right now because people are coming out of their homes for the first time. So that's, that's one thing is, is networking. You can be on the cusp on the leading edge of networking right now, even, even if you're brand new to it. The number two is that when you do a networking of, uh, event and everybody's a stranger in there, they don't know anything about you. So, you know, first of all, don't say you're new, like I'm a realtor and I'm new, just go in there as a freaking professional realtor, you know, stick head high, chest out, ready to rock and roll, be confident, and, and be there to help others and, and care about others. And if you're interested in others, they're not going to they're not gonna ask you, how long have you been in real estate? Why? Because you're never going to let them ask that question. You're going to be asking so many questions that people are going to answer your questions, and you're going to find out more about them, and, and that's powerful. The third thing, too, is, is that networking is one of those things where you, it's kind of like, uh, who was the turtle in Finding Nemo? The one where they just went through the jellyfish. They were both on Dory and Nemo were, or the father were like basically unconscious. And oh, Crush, Crush the turtle, right? He took uh, the dad. I don't even know what the dad's name was in Finding Nemo. It was all about Nemo, right? It's kind of like me. I'm no longer Michael Mayer. I'm Max's dad I, to everybody. So I get it. But Crush puts the father on his back and they go into the East Australian current. And they were going really slow. And they went into the obstacles, the jellyfish. They were nearly done in their business, slumping on their journey. And then they got help from a guy named Crush who put them on his back and went 220 miles an hour underneath the water 10 times as fast or maybe even 100 times f faster than they were going before and that's what networking is once you get into influence and networking it will fly you it will literally accelerate your business accelerate your business and your connections and your influence and everything that you were looking for and the people you meet are just absolutely terrific so i'm telling you uh this was just fantastic. Any final words of wisdom, Bryce, for, for, for those, those listening before we tune out? You know, earlier while you were talking, you mentioned the, the fact that you need to get to know the people that you're working or that you're talking to, connecting with. One of my favorite sayings of all times is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care really doesn't matter what I know. It matters who I know and who I can connect you with. Mm -hmm. 
or what I can do to help your business. And you mentioned that you get referrals within a week. The best way to do that is to make them feel like you've helped them. If you help them, they're going to want to give you your, their business. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that would be my final, just help people. That's it. Yeah. People don't help care people to help yourself. Yeah. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's the truth, right? And it, it, it is so amazing with how counterintuitive some things are until you execute it. Like, you know, people don't care. Everybody's always trying to get attention, get attention. And it's like, you want to get attention, pay attention, pay attention to somebody else and you will get plenty of attention. And it's like, inter- I want people to be interested in our business, right? It's, it's, it's you know, I, I really want people to, to be aware and, and know what we're doing. It's like, all right, so be interested in others. You know, be interested in others and all of a sudden you're interesting. That's how to be interesting is to be interested first, right out of, you know, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And, and but this, this carries on, you know, you want people to give to you, give first. You know, it's, 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 and you know, it's like Proverbs eleven twenty five, which I quote, you know, quite often, which is honestly a big part of my entire life is, you know, it generosity leads to prosperity. Who is he who is generous shall be prosperous. Well, notice generosity comes first. It doesn't say be prosperous and then give, right? Which is the misconception that I think a lot of people have in the world is, yeah, once I make the money, I'll be, I'll be giving. And the fact is, is, is you'll never be prosperous. So you'll never experience that. And, you know, generosity leads to prosperity. But the second part of Proverbs eleven twenty five is he who refreshes others shall himself be refreshed. And it's like, yeah, right. But who goes first? We refresh others, praise, compliments, love on them, gifts, love language, everything that we do that shows that we care and that we're helping them. We have to go first. We have to go first. And um, that's the key, I think, to be always be connecting. Bryce, I just have to tell you, um, this is one that people need to like star and favorite and note because it's one of those where this is going to stand the test of time. And they're going to want to listen to it over and over and over again. I'm telling you, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for being our guest here today on Referrals Podcast. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, note it. And and just so you know, you can share this. Share this. It's easy. You got a little square with a little arrow up. Click on that. And you can actually forward this to somebody by text message, through an email, through any way that you want to, you can share this podcast. I'd love for you to do that. Also, do me a favor. If you haven't rated and reviewed it, do do it right now. Make it happen. People do read your reviews of this podcast and they listen or they don't based on what they read. So you have influence. You have an impact. You can do that. I appreciate that. And last but not least, I would love for you to meet with me and Bryce and Tommy and Aaron and many others that are all going to RMS 22. Referral Mastery uh, uh, Referral Mastery Summit is in Orlando, September 27th through the 29th. You can still make it. Rooms are still available. It's not quite sold out. We have seats available. You can make it happen. Go to rms22.com. We'd love to fist bump, hang out, bro hug, whatever it means to you. Let's figure out your love language, and we'll love on you at RMS 22. Here's the thing. Do me a favor, just check it out. Go to rms22.com, see if it fits. If you want to hang out with a bunch of like-minded, awesomely referable people who share referrals throughout the entire world, it might be for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an amazing episode of Referrals Podcast. I thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for downloading and listening each and every week. Just know how much we appreciate you. We love it. We appreciate you. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you next time on Referrals Podcast.